This year is the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War. Many former pupils of Colchester Royal Grammar School fought in the war. And as with the Great War, which ended just 21 years before the Second World War began, every aspect of day-to-day -day life at the school was affected throughout the six years between 1939 and 1945, early in the war. Another school came to share the buildings and facilities with our school. Later, the school was evacuated elsewhere in the country for a short time. There were air raids in the local area. There was the threat of invasion. There were restrictions on travel. There was food rationing for everybody. Families were split up. Friends and relations were killed and wounded in the fighting. Unfortunately, coronavirus makes this the first generation of CRGS students and staff since the end of the war, whose daily lives have been directly and severely impacted by worldwide events. The effects, of course, are not the same as those of global conflict. But as in both wars, many former students are today fighting on the front lines of the battle against coronavirus. 73 former CRGS pupils and teachers were killed serving in the forces during the war, fighting with the Royal Navy, the Army, the Royal Air Force, the Merchant Navy, and the Australian Imperial Force in places as far afield as North Africa, the Middle East, Holland, Italy, Greece, France, Belgium, Germany, Malta, Burma, India, Singapore, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. Our very way of life today, our freedom, our prosperity, were paid for with their blood, with the blood of the even more numerous wounded and with the sacrifices of those who fought but were mercifully unscathed. They encourage us and inspire us. Take, for example, 26-year-old former CRGS pupil, David Glass. David was commanding a platoon of the Royal Norfolk Regiment at Kohima in northeastern India. Kohima was one of the greatest and most costly battles of the Second World War a turning point in the campaign against Imperial Japan. At a critical point in the battle, on the 4th of May, 1944, David was ordered to make an immediate improvised attack into the teeth of enemy fire to seize a vital Japanese machine gun post. As he rallied his men, David handed his watch to a fellow officer with the words, take that and write to Louise, won't you? And see that she gets it. The officer said, we're going to see you again shortly, David. He replied, I doubt it, I doubt it. David and his men captured the position. He was killed doing so. He knew he would die, yet still he went. It was not that he was unafraid. How could he be? Courage is not an absence of fear. It is the moral strength to overcome that fear. At Kohima, David Glass displayed undiluted courage and dedication to duty. He gave up his life for his comrades in arms, his family, his friends and his country. We grieve that so many young lives, like David's, were cut short so soon. But although many of us wore the same purple blazer, sat in the same classrooms, 
raced across the same sports fields and can proudly associate ourselves with them. We did not know them and cannot mourn them. We can admire them though and be grateful to them for the freedom we enjoy today. And perhaps we have a duty at this time of year, close to Remembrance Sunday, to remember the 73 Colchester Royal Grammar School students and staff who laid down their lives for us. Rex Slinger, Edward Dunton, Peter Pawsey, Jack Cresswell, Paul Hurst, Gerald Garrard, Owen Whiteman, Kenneth Coney, Alan Dyer, Ronald Frost, Arthur Fitch, Francis Richardson, Jack Bendel, Douglas Ashcroft, John Addy, James Leach, Robert Page, Francis Pope, Frederick Finch, Gordon Studley, Patrick Sace, Eric Stone, Arthur Florey, Herbert Winch, James Sargent, Dennis Wilsmore, Philip Sayer, Horace Coe, Robert Sargent, Ivan Bland, Roy Whitehead, Leonard Cunningham, Herbert Dixon, Leslie Goldspink, Timothy Cork, Peter Tye, Anthony Pissarro, Robert Dobby, Kenneth Lamanby, Malcolm Dobby, Alec Ruffle, Reginald Cox, Cyril Cleveland, Arthur Gowers, Arthur Berry, Eric Pearson, John Scales, Robert Perkis, Guy Bevington, Ivor Carter, Philip Weatherly, Stanley Rayner, Henry Parslow, David Glass, Walter Olliot, Herbert Broom, Benjamin Robinson, Edward Dalgleish, George Knott, Charles Wyatt, Leslie Frost, Ralph Chopping, Charles Hickey, Aubrey Barker, Terence Priddle, Edwin Borley, Edward Gilders, Brian Wright, Bertram Ramsey, Eric Tracy, Edward May, Ernest Last, Peter Ellis. 78 former pupils and staff of Colchester Royal Grammar School were killed during and immediately after the Great War from 1914 to 1918. We remember them also. This poem, To Fall Asleep, was written by 15-year-old CRGS pupil J.K. Sansom. It was published in the Colcestrian magazine in July 1943 at the height of the Second World War. To fall asleep. Be not sorrowful when death doth take away the dear ones we have cherished from our birth and parts us from the ones we love the most. For death is but a gate 
into eternity, a portal leading to the realms of light, where those same dear ones play on harps of gold. Be not sorrowful, they have escaped the suffering, hardships, labours, tears of this our world, made vile by the ungodliness and avarice of man. Now they sing the praises of their king in most wonderful polyphony and bow to him who died that we should die no more. Be not sorrowful, for they are always near. They would not wish for mourning, sad and dull, for where they dwell, the daylight is serene. We do not see them as they were, but in our hearts, their memories live on and ne'er will die. They stand beside us and encourage us to be more pure in spirit than they themselves had been. Be not sorrowful. For death is but a sleep from which we wake into a world blessed with eternal light. <laughs>